I'm sure like everyone else, when it all sort of kicked off, I had like, my anxiety went through the roof. It's a point in time, you know, we're running in a very unusual time. It's a recording of where we are now. I'm Laura Gallagher, I'm co-director at Urban Wilderness in Stoke-on-Trent. Urban Wilderness work with communities and artists to produce cultural events in public spaces. These events bring people together and create a sense of community. Summer 2020 has been so challenging for everybody, but at least we had the outdoors where we could socialise, connect with nature and support our own well-being. So we'd like to invite you to share in these pieces of artwork which have been created for the Winter Wastelands project. We have John Paul Green, whose temporary messages of hope have been put out into parks across Stoke-on-Trent. The Cultural Sisters have been exploring ritual through costume and their actions in a park connecting us to nature. The Clay Comrades are a group of volunteers who work at Spode and they are going to be dealing with some of the more difficult emotions that come up at the moment using clay and firing as a way of processing these feelings. And we have Asma, who is a young artist from Etruria. She is going to be doing portraits of some of the people who live in her community so that we can then share those through postcards with positive messages and aspirations for the future. I'm a graphic designer and artist based in Stoke-on-Trent. Skated longer than I've not skated, which is a long time. And usually I sort of skate rails, I've probably skated this rail right here and do ramps and tricks and things like that. Uh, but obviously when it all happened, the last place I, I wanted to end up was in hospital. So I sort of held back on the tricks and things and sort of just went out and skated just for the fun of it, just for, you know, sort of fitness element. Discovered just how absolutely stunning that sort of canal paths are. I am um, the maid of inevitable change and transformation. I'm Sister Superior of the Yellow Duster and together we are the Immaculate Sisters of Hearts Hill Park. Hearts Hill Park is a regular for me over the last six months, nine months of the pandemic. It became <clears throat> a different space again. Parts of it were, were became really busy so I had to start exploring new parts. Little areas of it became special. I started noticing new parts of it and it is a massive place and a very beautiful place that I actually think that people don't are not really aware of. We all have very different backgrounds, very different age groups um, and just the only thing that links us really is clay. Clay Comrades is anyone who uses the open studio so we have no fixed list, fixed members. Anyone can be one of us if they come and get involved. I've been coming since the biannual 2015, I think. Uh, I started as a volunteer at the biannual and uh, I'd already done some work in play before, quite a long time ago, and I, I found I enjoyed it and I, I got back into the studio and it started working with the clay and I quite enjoyed it. I never had the opportunity once I graduated to really get involved in clay again um, and the studio allowed me to, to find that passion again and start working with materials directly and it's a really important part of me and who I am now. Um, although I'm an art teacher I spend my life kind of teaching materials and teaching young people how to do things and it's really important to, to find your own kind of creative route through and clay comrades the studio and ceramics has allowed me to do that again. It was sort of born out of me having to wander around my local sort of community and finding out new green spaces that I've never come across before and then just seeing all the positive messages that were posted in people's windows and written on uh, in chalk around people's driveways and thought you know I'd like to get involved with that and sort of put my own spin on it. Well I've been really enjoying just doing the canal walks, exploring the local area, which is you know, another positive thing to come out from, uh, from all this. I found out different uh, stories about what was going on in local communities, local communities sort of pulling together and putting uh, you know, positive messages out there and been really overwhelmed with the, the feedback, really. Second one that I did about the, you know, the, being able to see a, a smile through uh, a mask, uh, people have actually gave real world examples. Uh, there was a, a woman that said, uh, 
she told the person at the till that you know because you can't see my face I am actually smiling she said that well I can you know I can see it in your eyes. One thing we did was to walk like make our walk a, a ritual walk so um, we slowed the pace and um, we didn't talk as well we did it in silence. We can appreciate more and absorb more of what is around. You know it's very much about noticing things so the walking became more of a ritual. At the end of the ritual we lit candles and we did it at dusk and that was to make some intentions and hopes. So we made um, a mantra, we adapted um, a song, didn't we? Yeah, we took an X-ray spec song written by Polystyrene and we uh, changed the words slightly so that we could create our own mantra. And another part was letting go, so when we brushed the leaves out of the way and we sort of um, put up, thought about what we wanted to let go of and we put that into stones and leaves and then threw those to the earth, very much like the trees are letting their leaves go at the moment where we stopped at a, a tree, an apple tree, that we were drawn towards and just spent quite a long time just looking at it. And I think the, um, you know, the urge is often to just keep going and move on, but we forced ourselves to stay a little bit longer and at the ritual we did that as well. Spode is our canvas really, it's a space that we've used really because the studio is located on site. Bode, we've seen change around us over the last four years. So we've seen elements of it be demolished, elements change, and elements kind of be reclaimed by nature and the world around us. And we find it's like this area of quiet in the middle of a city that's quite busy and bustling around us. So it's a space where we've always managed to find a quiet corner to work in, whether it be in the rose garden or just taking your work out into the sun to get it to dry better. It feels um, very wild as a place to be found in such an, you know, an industrial city, you know, surrounded by roads and industrial areas on all sides. Mm. But it really does feel so wild and surprisingly unvisited by people as well. Well, first I've had to cut out a stencil which was quite painstaking work. Sort of get the aggregate, do uh, what I'm actually going to write on Illustrator, map it out to how it fits together as a sentence, lay it out, and then just get pouring gravel into stencil. And then the first one that I did was uh, just on the lakeside, which said optimism, which was in response to the Stoke fields. And uh, I hadn't really planned on putting the second one uh, around Westport Lake, but I uh, just got such positive feedback from the from the optimism piece and uh, there's just so much football coming through and it obviously you can see it's absolutely beautiful place uh, yeah I thought I'd choose the the second one uh, put here as well the second one saying a smile behind a mask is still visible in our eyes part of this project we've been making cubes um, and expressing bits about us and our personality on the outside of the cubes um, and also some of our emotions around lockdown and our feelings. So a lot of mine have um, leaves and plants pressed into the outside of them. Really that's because my garden and my world around me has been really important during lockdown. I've made um, three different cubes based on a response to the Covid situation and I've made cubes which have represented different aspects of that, some of which have used the language that's been it's new kind of new words which, or new terminology which is connected with the virus. And a lot of us are quite keen gardeners so plants have become really important to all of us and we've swap vegetables and swap stories about allotments and plots and gardens. We've had a lot of talk actually about the wall behind us um, and this sort of space about how we're going to kind of bring all of these cubes and pieces together into something to kind of signify us coming back together on site as well. I think the idea is to uh, actually display the boxes somewhere and I, I came up myself, I, I like to see them actually dangling down in a, in a column. I'd like people to photograph them and take them away as a, a memento, really. Well, the optimism one now has been up for a week and that's sort of no longer legible. 
Uh, so I'll go back down there and tidy it up, and, which is good for recycling because I can use the aggregate again. The second one has been up for a week and it's still absolutely perfect. The, even the sign that I put up there explaining a little bit about it and who I am as an artist is still there. So yeah, I think it's maybe struck a nerve with people and the, you know, I guess they want to leave it there for, for other people to see. I feel as an artist, there's that freedom to sort of pick from different aspects and maybe a little bit of pagan, druidic things that I've been involved with or been to over the years. I'm thinking as well about the things that I do now as a ritual that I wouldn't have done before and I'm looking at my own uh, growth and transformation. And then we're also going to create some cards that will have elements of it, of elements of what we've done here, linking in with rituals, creating little pieces of art really to mm. share with other people. The time of year, the nights getting longer, the leaves falling off the trees. So I think actually that did influence our rituals quite a lot, didn't it? Yeah. That, the colour yellow came from just all the beautiful yellow leaves that we were seeing. And You know, I have a lot of ideas and a lot of them don't sort of sort of sit in the back of my mind and this is just one of those ones that has thought yeah I'm going to run with this and it's come to fruition and you know I've had a lot of positive feedback from it so yeah if you do have a, an idea of doing something in your community and spreading a bit of positivity then yeah just get out there and, and get it done. I think it's basically the comradeship uh, you can actually talk about similar things um, more often than not in your own personal life people don't understand the play so it's nice to be with people who are like-minded. It's, it's nice to do something collaborative that you can share with other people and you can connect because we are spending such a lot of time disconnected. I, I mean, I'm, I'm 70 anyway, so I, I'm in, I fall within that bracket anyway, you know, so um, my wife said to me, make sure you put, you, put your face mask on and you know be careful don't go anywhere near anybody so I've always got that pressure in the background uh, of uh, taking care you know but I, I still like to see the people you know so I like the personal contact with, with everybody. For me it's, it's very personal and, I'm, and I appreciate that everybody's experience is very different but I'm really hope, hoping that um, on the other side, that we take with us a lot of what we're learning now, I think we need to take with us a, a certain slowness. I think it, we, were, we were living far too fast, and, and I know people have said this, but I really think that we really were living far too fast. And we need to kind of take our time, we need to be more considerate of others. I think, you know, there's so many lessons to be learned. When we were in lockdown and not able to sort of go out and socialise, it was just so nice, just Again, just passing people and you know, acknowledging other people that were that were still out there, you know, just living the lives and having fun, basically. I feel as though we've had this immense support from much, much more people than I usually do get support from um, when we put stuff on social media. I feel as though this has really pulled in an interesting um, group of people, lots more of them. Staying in contact with each other has been important. The, the Zoom meetings, the sharing of photos in WhatsApp groups, the random posts have, have felt important. Um, and actually one of the nicest things we only did last week, we did a Zoom call where we, um, we, set, we made cubes on Zoom, which was really bizarre. So it was just like a normal Zoom call, but we were sat there with our clay in our rooms making. Um, and I know last week I really wouldn't have got clay out if I hadn't have had that Zoom call to look forward to and be part of getting clay out and working together as a collective.